Hey there, welcome to Enzo's Place. So I don't know if you saw the short already, but um, did the Penelope barrel strength today. So we'll check this out, how it's, how it's opened up a bit. We had oaken vanilla and cloves on the nose last time. A little bit of winter mint. Talk a little bit about this bottle. Yeah, a lot of cloves, a little bit of vanilla. A little bit of winter mint, just like I like I got on the on the on the neck pour. Yeah, you can taste a little bit of age, taste the oak on it. Uh, there's something nice and sweet and just a hint of butter on the palate. Butter, butter as it finishes. It's kind of nice. So let's talk about the bottle for a second. I do enjoy the Penelope bottles, the long skinny bottles. Uh, they make building shelves for it annoying, but you know, what are you going to do? So eventually I'll get this thing finished and we'll have different shelves for different height bottles. Uh, but anyway, so it's Penelope. It's barrel strength. It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys. It's been aged nine years. It's got all four of your traditional, um, what do you call them? Grains in it. So we got corn, rye, wheat, malted barley. Of course, they don't tell you how much. That's their mash bill. They don't want to tell you that. It's 109 proof. Um, it's 54 and a half percent alcohol by volume, if you prefer to know it this way. Oh, look at me. I'm a silly boy. Blended mash bill. So corn, 85%. So that's way above the 51% required for bourbon. Uh, we got 10% rye. So that's a decent amount of rye in there. Uh, we got 2% wheat and 3% malted, ba malted barley. Can't say that word for some reason. Uh, it's been aged nine, nine years. This is batch 202 from 23. Non-chill filtered. That means something to some people. One of these days I'll have to take a couple of chill, chill filtered and um, some non-filtered stuff and compare them. Like try to find brands that are have similar taste profiles to each other, but are just different filtering systems. I'll have to do that sometime. All right, Penelope Private Select explores new and unique expressions of our signature four grain straight bourbon whiskey. From hand selecting the barrels to creating each blend, Private Select strives to showcase the best in all of us. Distilled in Indiana and Kentucky, this batch is aged more than nine years in charred new American oak barrels. We hope everyone enjoys this unique offering as much as we do. All right, so distilled in Indiana and Kentucky. Um, so I don't know where, where the Kentucky would come from. Generally, people have told me that if something's distilled in Indiana, it's usually an MGP product. Um, so, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, and I don't know where the Kentucky distillate would come from. Uh, but then it is uh, bottled by Penelope Bourbon Bottling Company in Bardstown, Kentucky. So they're in Bardstown. So who knows, could it be Bardstown? I don't know. I guess we could always Google it down the road. Um, so Private Select. I think I got this on like a... It doesn't say OHLQ on it anywhere, but I feel like I bought this on a day where OHLQ, that's the Ohio Liquor liquor Board, um, released some stuff. But I don't see anything about who picked the Private Select. So without any other knowledge, I'm going to have to just say that um, Penelope must have selected it. So thanks to Penelope for, for selecting this for us. All right, let's get back in for a second nosing. See if anything's changing. The winter mint's a little more, a little more prominent, and um, the vanilla is a little more prominent. The cloves have backed off, but I can still get them. But they've backed off from the other other two flavors. So it's got a little bit of a hug at the end. It's got a little bit of cinnamon at the end, which is nice. Like right before I swallow it, I get just a blast of cinnamon. But let's see what's on the front of the palate. So on the front of the palate, um, the winter mint doesn't come through, cloves doesn't come through. I get vanilla and it kind of almost converts into a maple. So it's like maple, but but kind of the maple mapleiness of it, if that's even a word, uh, is kind of like intermingled with the, with the vanilla. So so the sweet kind of transforms a little bit. Uh, you do get, um, on the nose, I can kind of smell the oak. And on my first taste, I could taste the oak. Um, it's not as strong on the second taste. That's an e-pour. I, I haven't been disappointed by any of the Penelope's. <clears throat> How many do I have anyway? Uh, a customer gave me that original one, and that's just their normal Penelope 80 proof. It's a good whiskey. Uh, and if you prefer lower proofs, it's a good whiskey for you to try. And then I know I got a rosé cask, I got the barrel strength, I got a toasted, I got an architect, and I have a Rio coming in. 
and down in Florida I have um, a Valencia and they've all been very good eventually you'll see all the reviews I'm pretty sure I've remembered to do the um, the neck pour of all of them maybe not the barrel strength and that's a new bottle up there I must have given some of the rest of my other bottle that smells good let's get back in there for third third nose or fourth depending on how you're counting Oh, you know what the butteriness I got on the end of the taste went away on the second taste. We'll look for it on this, on this next nose and the taste. Okay, a little of the cinnamon comes through now on this third nosing, or fourth, depending on how you're counting. A lot of sweet on this fourth nosing, too. Let's call it the 34th nosing, since I don't know which one it is. Boy, that's just that's just becoming delightful. So, still has an aspect of the wintergreen. It's got a little bit of the cinnamon. The clothes is completely vanished on this nosing. There's something else sweet in there. I'm not sure what. Maybe for, maybe like a confectioner's sugar, like a powdered sugar? It's kind of getting hints of that now. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so cinnam like cinnamon and butter right before the Kentucky Hug, or it's Indiana and Kentucky. Let's get come up with a nickname for it. It'll be the uh, in the Tucky Hug, Kindiana Hug, something like that. Um, but yeah, so just that little hint of cinnamon and butter right before it goes down gives you the hug. Um, it's like a sweet and a pepper at the same time. Um, I'd say that confectionery sugar note that, that I got last, that's uh, kind of holding strong. Uh, so mostly mostly powdered sugar, a little bit of little bit of maple, a little bit of black pepper on the palate, and then and then butter and cinnamon right before I swallow it. It's kind of fun. That's a fun pour. I mean, but it, it's hundred bucks, so it, it better be fun. Um, I'll put the rest of this in the infinity bottle. Uh, very soon, uh, I'm gonna do the Penelope. Um, I'm gonna do the Penelope blind. We'll do that soon. Today, um, I believe I did a solo blind. I'm pretty sure this is what I'm uploading in a minute. A uh, solo blind of um, Buffalo Trace Sazerac products. And um, in, in one of, in a friend's opinion, I sent him a picture of the lineup. In his opinion, it's the blind that's made the most sense so far of all the blinds. So I can't wait to show you that. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's go ahead. Since I'm not gonna finish this, we're gonna put this in the affinity bottle. Okay. Because. We need to drink responsibly. Um, I'm going to give you an update on how the barrel's doing, so let me go get a sample of that. Okay, so oops, let me check the date. Okay, so we put that in right at the end of October. All right, so. so I put four less expensive whiskeys in there and to let them cook a little bit. And there's probably um, just a little bit of, of apple in there still because the, uh, of the first thing that I put in there was that apple brandy uh, from Watershed. Apple brandy finished bourbon from Watershed. Um, so let me find my calendar. So we, we I put that in October 29th. And um, the internet has told me, uh, it's a three liter barrel. The internet's told me that um, 80 days in that is the equivalent of like your traditional 53 gallon barrel. So 80 days. So what would that be? That would be, that'd be 11 weeks and three days. So let's go back. So there, there's October, nope, that's November. October 29th, it was a Sunday apparently. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oop. 11 and then three days boop 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 so um it was aged a year on january 17th so we've gone another one two we've gone another two weeks since then okay so two weeks it's 14 days uh about a quarter of a year so this is like a year and a quarter in a regular barrel um and like i said there's just there's just four cheap whiskeys in there boy and, and it's it kind of smells young and cheap let me see how easy it is to find those bottles i wish i had thought of this before i started recording and I would probably look like I make more sense.
Okay, so what we had in there. So first of all, we got Ancient Age, Standard Ancient Age 80 proof. Uh, that's a Buffalo Trace product, actually. That's one of their lower shelf products. We got Old Tub. Let's see, Old Tub is a Jim Beam lower distillery. Uh, but this is, I believe, Bottled and Bond. Bottled and Bond, so this is 100 proof. So we got 80 proof, 100 proof. Um, <laughs> I bought this thing just because of the name, America, and, uh, and it, it tastes like America. Um, where are we at? This one's a 90 proof. So right now we're, we're averaging 90 proof. And then finally, this is a local one. I wasn't real thrilled with it. Um, but it's a local distillery, Lake Erie Distillery. I am going to check out more of their products and check out the distillery. So that's 90 proof. So we're we're averaging 90 proof on this bottle. But I've got these four whiskeys in here. So let's let's look at some of the stuff though. Corn and barley. Let's see. Let's see. Made with pure American grains, but America does not tell me which grains. Just that they're from America. Old tub. Kentucky straight bourbon. Limited edition sour mash. Doesn't say what grades though. And then ancient age. Again, don't know the grade. So really the only ones we know the grade on is this. Um, boy, it just smells young. I hope it ages. I hope it keeps going and gets better. It just smells very, like it kind of smells like medicine. And I would rather get, you know, I want some flavors. I don't want medicine like rubbing alcohol. That's kind of what I mean when I say medicine, like a rubbing alcohol, like very astringent. Let's see what the palate's like though. It's not great. It's not great, but well, let's try to get, let's try to get some nosing off it. Maybe as like my palate acclimates to it. Of course, after drinking a nine year Penelope, maybe this was a mistake. <laughs> cinnamon. I'm getting cinnamon. It's coming past the medicine for me. Cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. Cinnamon comes through on the palate. Kind of light sweetness. The vanilla comes through a little bit. A little bit of a Kentucky hood. Call it Ohio hug since there's a there's a some Ohio distillate in there. So you know what? After sitting with it a minute, let's go ahead and, and one one YouTuber I watch ADHD whiskey. He says uh, only a fool doesn't smell and taste it at least three times. So let's get in there for a third nosing, and maybe we'll feel better about the barrel. And I don't mind leaving it in there for a long time. I'll leave it in there for a, a real year, which would uh, what would a real year be? A real year would be an equivalent in that barrel. A, a, a real year would be supposedly equivalent of four years in a in a traditional barrel. Okay, third nose, it's not bad. Most of the medicine, the, the rubbing alcohol smell has gone. The cinnamon stayed, the vanilla stayed. A little tiny bit of citrus, if you can believe it. And not any, I can't say a specific citrus, so like citric acid, I guess. Can't say if it's like a lemon, lime, or grapefruit or anything. There's just a hint of citrus in there. It's leaning towards orange. It's leaning towards orange. Ha! Huh. This might make a good old-fashioned then. I'm feeling better about this barrel every minute. We're still gonna leave it in there a while. <laughs> the, the orange has come through the palate. Uh, it's like candied orange and then it finishes in cinnamon. Um, this is surprising me, especially with how it nosed and tasted the first time. All right, so this is surprising me. Uh, it might not ever be something I wanna do as a sipper, but this might be great for an old fashioned. So you know what, next time, uh, all right, so so what, where would two years be? So two years would be 12 months, uh, 12 weeks and no, 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 no. One year is 11 weeks and three days. So two years would be 22 weeks and six days, so almost 23 weeks. So where that's August, we don't want August, October, there we go. So 26 weeks, no, no, 22 weeks and six days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
22 weeks and six days it puts us at april 6th so on april 6th this will be at two years um so you know what i'm going to set an alarm to make sure that we sample this that's going to be a saturday uh but we'll probably release it on a thursday thursday um barrel test on april 6th 3 p.m that's fine give me an alert alert at time of event okay so cool so on april 6th then let's see april 6th it might be a down it might not so we'll have to play it by ear maybe i'll have Devin guest star and taste it for me give me his his notes um but there we go i've added it to the calendar probably mrs Izzo knows about it now sorry just responding to a text okay so on april 6th this will be two years either myself or Devin will taste it give you a review all right that's all but anyway let's go to the penelope um barrel strength age nine years at 100 bucks um if that's within your budget i think it's a good buy um when this gets emptied if i come across another one at retail i will probably buy it again i wouldn't hunt for it i wouldn't pay over retail for it not that there's anything wrong with it it's just you know um you'll see in coming weeks i made a couple of impulse secondary buys and i bought a couple of things and I paid way more than I should have. Um, but uh, so with this Penelope 9, I'd say buy it at retail if you see it. It's a good pour. And um, I wouldn't overpay for it. It's a good pour, but 100 bucks, 100 bucks is good. If somehow it's on sale, which it probably won't be, but you never know. Um, on sale would be even better. But that's all I have for you today. So thanks for hanging out for Penelope and a barrel update. Whatever you're doing, whatever, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, like think of your catchphrase and then say it pro properly. So here we go. Uh, if you're working, work safely. If you're drinking, drink responsibly. But whatever you do, do it with a little bit of whimsy, and you're going to have a good time. And uh, on a personal note, bourbon is a vegetable, 51% corn. Uh, just a fun little hat, Mrs. Izzo got me. Um, but thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes at Izzo's place, and I will see you the next time you come on around. Take care.